On Monday, February 21st, Milwaukee Tool made a huge announcement to the world. They were releasing three new cordless job site vacuum cleaners. We had previously flown out to Milwaukee on the 15th to get a first-hand look at these new vacuums, put them through their paces, and see a whole bunch of testing that they had done on the vacuums already to make sure that they were job site tough for you, the user. We were able to do a whole bunch of suction tests with common job site debris, sawdust, sand, particulate. We actually witnessed a twisting test for their new hose where it went up against their competitor. But there was one test on a commonly broken, highly worn component of these vacuum cleaners that Milwaukee Tool would only show us a brief snippet of on a video. It wasn't in person, and when we asked about the testing, they really weren't too forthcoming with the information. And we knew that you would appreciate us doing our best to duplicate that testing here to see if Milwaukee Tools testing was above board or if they're running deceptive testing practices. And we're gonna get started on it right after this message from our sponsor, VCG Construction. Wanna help out with the channel? Then head on over to our merch store. You can get hats, hoodies, t-shirts. Link will be in the description below. I gotta tell you, these new offerings are pretty cool. The hose seems rugged, the wheels seem really nice. It rolls really well, the nice top handle. This is the six gallon unit. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about it while we run some suction tests. It's on the M18 fuel platform. Milwaukee Tool tells us it has 3.5 peak horsepower. This is a wet dry vacuum. Milwaukee Tool also says it has the most durable wheels and hoses throughout the industry. This is Bear Tool. Product number is 0910-20. Although you can use any M18 battery in this vacuum cleaner, for the best performance, you're going to want to use an HO architecture battery. We will be using a 12 amp hour for all the testing done here. A surprising thing about a vacuum cleaner at this price point, it doesn't have a self-cleaning mode, which means it won't be table one compliant. The vacuum cleaner is two speeds and there may be some situations where low might be preferable over high. During the event, Milwaukee Tool also announced a whole line of shop vac accessories that will work with any brand shop vac, but we'll share those with you in a separate video. Included in this bear tool, you're gonna to get the motor head. You're going to get a six gallon tank, the cart, an inch and seven eighths by nine foot flexible hose, an inch and seven eighths utility nozzle, large high efficiency filter, inch and seven eighths crevice tool, and two inch and seven eighths extension wands. Milwaukee Tool claims a continuous cleaning time of 47 minutes with light debris, which would be approximately 1300 square feet, and a max power mode, which would be heavy debris of 31 minutes up to a thousand square foot all while running on a single 12 amp hour battery. One of the things that can be irksome is re-engaging the vacuum into the cart. You have to line up the rear tabs and the front tab perfectly. Maybe it's something that will wear in over time and become a little bit easier. One of my favorite things about these vacuums that I don't think I really realized until I got this one is that they are indeed made in the USA with global materials. And if you wanted more specs and features and to see the unveiling at the awesome event at Milwaukee Tool, you can go to this video right over here. And now it's time for us to get serious. It doesn't matter which tool manufacturer is doing the testing. They're always going to want to make their product seem like it's the best, that it outperforms the competition. And rightfully so. It's not like they're going to do any type of advertisement which it is, and say, hey, you know what? We're gonna enter the market with our new vacuum cleaner and we wanna be number two. 
And I understand that. But if you're going to be running some testing and you're having a press event where you're inviting everyone out to see your new offering and you're going to be doing some of the testing in person, why not do all of the testing in person? We witnessed what was called the job site treadmill, where these vacuums ran side by side over simulated job site debris. The competitor, according to Milwaukee Tool, which were a little unclear about the amount of time it took, broke well in advance of this vacuum cleaner. But we weren't able to see it in person. And when we requested the footage of the testing prior, Milwaukee Tool said, because it was done in the lab, they weren't able to release it to us. So you know how we do. Our initial iteration of the job site treadmill consisted of speed bumps placed every 12 and 6 inches made of 8th inch thick wood. The job site treadmills were running at a consistent pace of 1.5 miles per hour for hours and hours and hours. One piece of information that was shared with us from Milwaukee Tool was that 20 pounds of weight was added to not only Milwaukee's factory, but the competitors. Be mindful, this was a work in progress. There was as much testing in making the testing work as there was testing of the vacuum cleaners. Between a mile and a half and two miles, one of our speed bumps came loose on the job site treadmill. We quickly reattached it and the test carried on. A little while later, another speed bump popped off. We quickly reattached it. Test carried on for miles and miles and miles. And the one thing we weren't able to recreate was the breakage of the wheel on the competitor's vacuum cleaner. What we were realizing was a common problem with the competitor's vacuum cleaners. The wheel's not breaking off, but the wheel's coming off within their housing. Their mounting point would pop off of the vacuum cleaner. Another thing we noticed at the end of the day was the wheels on both vacuum cleaners weren't necessarily worn or damaged, but what was worn was the testing speed bumps. They were made of wood. We felt that maybe our testing media was being worn down as opposed to the vacuum cleaner's wheels being worn down. We knew we needed to make a change. What we decided to do at this point was replace the wood with eighth inch thick hot rolled steel strips. That would be our new speed bump. In the following days, we ran that as our testing media and we removed the rear straps from both vacuum cleaners. We thought maybe removing those rear straps would allow the vacuum cleaners to bounce around more and we would be able to recreate the breakage that we saw previously at the Wolf Tool. Now that the change is complete, we're surely just moments away from one of these competitors failing. But which one will fail first? On the second day, during the startup of the testing, the competitor's vacuum loses a wheel. Right before the mile mark, we have another instance where the competitor's vacuum cleaner lost a wheel. Becoming frustrated that we weren't actually having a wheel snap off, but continually having wheels come loose at their mounting point, we proceed to glue the wheels on. At the five mile mark on this day of testing, even after gluing the wheels on, another wheel falls off. At the 5.5 mile mark during this round of testing, the competitor's vacuum falls over, which indicates it's not as stable at speed. Because of that, it lost one of its wheels. At the seven mile mark, the competitor experiences another instance of its wheel coming loose. At the end of this day of testing, we become so frustrated that the wheels keep falling off, but not breaking out of the vacuum cleaner that we decide to super glue all four wheels into place to prepare it for its next day of testing. In this round of testing, the competitor's vacuum cleaner has already accumulated over 17 miles of runtime. That's 10 miles beyond where failure was observed of the competitor during Milwaukee Tools testing. We start to wonder 
What exactly needs to happen to have the competitor have a wheel snap off? One of the things that was easily changed, a variable, would be to increase the speed. Job site treadmill was set to 2.8 miles an hour, which induces some violent jostling, but no crazy jumps in the air like we saw previously. At this point, the Milwaukee vacuum cleaner continues to roll like just another day at the office, but the competitor's vacuum has a tough time staying upright. Matter of fact, no matter how many times we roid it, it falls back over. And what we noticed was the wheels didn't snap off, but they did bend. And as they bent, it inhibited them from spinning freely. This began to take large chunks out of the wheels and caused the vacuum to continuously fall over, effectively making it fail. So doing our best to duplicate Milwaukee Tools testing, we were able to achieve a failure, but it wasn't in the exact manner that Milwaukee Tool achieved it. My question to all of you is, if you have one of the competitor's shop vats, have you ever had a wheel snap out of this housing? I haven't. What I have had happen is these pop off. I feel like a lot of this is turned into durability testing of the competitor and not Milwaukee Tool. And that's not what this test was about. This test was proving out Milwaukee Tool's testing practices. We weren't ever able to achieve the jumps that we saw from the competitor in Milwaukee's testing. I don't know, maybe our vacs weren't tethered in the same way. Maybe our speed bumps weren't high enough. We did elevate the speed. And to that fact, Milwaukee's vacuum cleaner continued at that elevated speed of 2.8 miles an hour for almost an additional hour. And then we cut the test because we knew it would probably run indefinitely. You can see here, the wheels on the cart are hardly worn, hardly worn. Another good part is, is that you're not, you're not tethered to this cart. If you did have a failure on this cart, you could replace the cart. And with an investment of $249 for this setup, it's great to be able to replace components. It's not a small investment. It's not the largest investment you can make for a shop quality vacuum, but it's nothing to sneeze at as well. It is most impressive to the point where in my earlier days, to get a failure from Milwaukee Tool, I probably would have thrown it off the roof. Video's over, but I know you want more. So this is how you're going to get it. First thing you need to do is pretend you're this guy and you're here in the birthplace of freedom. Now ring that bell like it's 1776 and let all notifications through. What? You're not subscribed yet? Well, smash this button here. After that, watch this video here, here, and maybe over here. See you later.